In this video, I'll be showing you how to make some awesome stencil art like this one, or even this one here. So this is a seven layer stencil of Kendrick Lamar, and I'll be showing you how to make each layer in Photoshop, and I'll be going through step by step, trying to keep it as easy and simple as possible, so even a beginner can follow along. I've also included some chapters down below in the description, so you can skip to each part that you're interested in, and hopefully this video helps you out to make some awesome stencil art. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you want to gonna do is create a new file in Photoshop, and I'm gonna create this as an A3 landscape document um, and go create. And then we're going to need our image of Kendrick Lamar, which I think I have on my desktop. There he is. So I'm just going to put that straight onto the document. I thought this one would be okay to work with. So the first thing I like to do is right click on it and go rasterize so we can start editing it. And then with the magic wand, I like to select the background area and just delete that. And maybe also these areas in the hair as we want to keep those. And then the other thing I like to do is because you can see that this image, the blacks don't look quite black. You know, they look like they're sort of a bit gray. So you can go to your image adjustments levels. And you can sort of see here, there's a little bit of a gap. So if we bring this little arrow across a little bit, that gives us a lot more depth to our image and that will really help when creating our stencils. So if you find that your stencils aren't coming out quite the right way, you can also play with this and then that will help a little bit. So the next thing I like to do is duplicate this layer a few times. Maybe four just to start off with and I'll create more later. So with the top one selected, I go to Image, Adjustments, and Threshold. And then bring that down to a point where we start getting the blackest of the black areas. So you can sort of see with the quality of the image, the stencil doesn't look that great. So I think that's going to work in our favor for this one, as I want to keep it sort of simple for the beginners. Because it gets rid of a lot of noise through here, and it makes it just a little bit cleaner. So 34 hour black, and I'm going to go select, color range, and delete all of the white. And then you can see our first layer is done, so that's our black out of the way already. And then I'm just going to switch that layer off. Now the next thing I like to do is when I'm going to be creating a color stencil, I like to separate all the colors into their own groups. So for example, if he was wearing a red hat, I'd cut that out and create a, put that on a separate layer so I can create a set of stencils for that color. So we'd have like a mid red, dark red and a light red for that particular item. If he was wearing a blue jumper, I'd do the same. I'd cut out the blue jumper and then make a set of stencils for that blue jumper. So it'd be like a mid blue, dark blue, and then a light blue. So for this particular image, we can see that the only separate color we have are the skin tones and maybe the zippers. So what I'm gonna do is just take the pen tool and then I'm just gonna separate the skin tones out. And one thing you wanna make sure of is that this line is sort of hidden behind the black. And that will just make it a bit easier later. So I just work with a pen tool and go slowly around all the colored areas. Just double checking to make sure there's a little bit of overlap there. What I do is I just click and then drag the handles out a little bit so I get a smoother line as well. So click, drag, click, drag, and when you get to the end, you see that little circle symbol, click, and that's our sort of uh, path created. So then we go over to the Paths tab, select the magic wand for the selection. I go select and then inverse the selection. So we select just the color in the face, go Control C, Come back over to the Layers tab over here, delete the face, and then Control V, and then you'll see we got our face on a separate layer here. So we got it on a separate layer. Okay, so once that's done, 
we can sort of hide the other layers we don't need for now. And what I'm going to start off with is just creating the layers for the skin tone. So what we want to do is duplicate that face a few times. So I'm thinking we probably need about four different layers for the skin tones, just to get with, just so we get a bit more detail in that. So starting off with the top one, I'll just go image, adjustments, and threshold, and bring that way down. And then actually just switch on the black as well if you can. So switch on the black, then select that and go image, adjustments, threshold. And the reason why we switch on the black is so we can see how much we're actually adding on the next color. So our black was at around 32. So if we add a little bit more, we go to about 55, I think. I think that should be pretty good. So we hit OK, switch off the black, select color range, select the white again, delete that. And then what I like to do at this point is go select, inverse the selection, switch this layer off that we've just created and then hit this tool over here, the eyedropper tool and then just select one of the dark brown tones through this area here S switch that layer back on and then get the paint bucket tool and then fill that in so we can actually see what it looks like as we're sort of creating the layers then what I like to do is select, uh, deselect to get rid of all those magic wands and then go through our rest of our skin tones creating all the rest of the layers. So with the next one it's the same process again. We go image, adjustments, threshold. Okay and our last one was at 52 so we'll go up a bit to maybe 95 and go OK. Then switch off the layer above it. Select color range, select the white, delete it, then go select, inverse selection, and then we do the same thing again. So we switch that layer off, try to find a nice mid-tone sort of brown that was sort of in between the last one we selected. So looking at the nose here, we can find a nice sort of brown there. And then hit that G key and fill that in. So now if you switch on the layer above it, you can sort of see how layers are sort of starting to come together. Then we go select, deselect, and then do the same thing with our next layer. So actually with our next one, we've got two darker tones. Now what we need is sort of like a mid-tone base that we'll actually paint at the bottom. So if we select this one, we switch off the layers above it, and maybe everything else too. We just grab our magic wand tool, go select, and then select inverse, so we got the face selected. And then what I'm thinking for our base is we can just go and find a mid-tone skin tone that's maybe from the cheeks so around here, maybe a little bit darker. So something like that I think is pretty good. And what we'll do is we'll delete the face and then with the paint bucket tool selected, we'll just fill that in. So now when you switch on the layers above it, we're starting to see that stencil come together. Okay, then with our last face down here, we drag that up a little bit, and we want to use this one for our highlights. So if we go Image, Adjustments, Threshold, and it might help if we switch on the ones above this as well. So Image, Adjustments, Threshold, and then just bring this up so we get some nice highlights. We want to get the highlights through the eyes, the forehead, through the cheek area to, to really build that form. And right about there I think is pretty good. So we hit OK. And then with this one we want to switch off the layers above and then we go select color range and actually delete the black area and then go select inverse uh, with this one I kind of forgot to 
create a highlight color. So I'm just going to make one up through here, just picking one from the swatch up the top here. And then just go G. And then switch on the other layer. So you can see half of our stencils are already created. So all of our skin tones are done, our black is done. Now what we need is a mid-tone for the jacket and a highlight for the jacket. And that should really complete our image and all of our stencils. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I think it'll be a nice seven layer stencil. So now what we can do is switch off all of these stencils that we created so far, switch this one back on that has the face deleted from that jacket area. And then what we can do is select the area around it. Actually, let's select the face first and fill that in. So what we want to do is use our eyedropper tool, find a nice mid-tone on the jacket, just fill that in quickly, and then select the area around it. Oops including these gaps in the hair and then select inverse that selection to select all this area in here and to make it easy I think it might be easier if we just delete that first and then just fill that in with the paint bucket tool and just go G and there we go that's our mid-tone done so now with these extra ones down here we'll drag those above it and we'll use this to create our highlights. So we go image, adjustments, threshold, and then drag that up until we start seeing some nice shapes appear on the jacket area. So we go OK, select color range black. I'm going to delete the black areas from this one. And what we don't need is also the face area. So for the upper half of that, I might just drag a box around it and just hit delete, get rid of that, because we only, only want it on the jacket, because we've already created all of our stencil layers for the face already. So, and then you can also use the erase tool through here and just delete. There's a little bit of a line that's being created around the edge of the this layer so we can kind of clean that up a little bit quickly and that's our next layer created delete this last one switch on the rest of our layers and you can see we've already created all of our layers and they're almost ready to go now we just need to create a couple of bridges add our markers on the edges of the paper and then we're ready to start painting so to create the markers on the edge of the paper, which are important to line up each layer of the stencil, what I like to do is select the top one, hold down shift, go down to the bottom layer, and that way you can select all of them. And then what I like to do is go edit, transform, and then just go scale, hold down the alt key, and you can see we can move all, scale down all of our layers together. I'm going to scale it down to about this size so we have enough space for our markers on the edge. And the next thing I like to do is go select the top layer, hit the text tool, drag a little box in the top corner, and then just add a little plus. Doesn't need to be too big, but what it does need to be is on the outside edge of your actual artwork. So I'll duplicate that because we need another one in the opposite corner. And then just using the move tool, drag that down to the bottom corner. And then with these two, what I'll do is I will right click on them and then go rasterize type and then right click again, merge layers. And then what I'll do is I'll duplicate this layer, right click again, duplicate. And then with the one that's closest to the black layer, what I'll do is I'll right click again and go merge down. So that way we've already applied these little markers to that top layer. So we can switch that off just so we know we've already applied it to that layer. Move this one down so it's on top of the next layer. Duplicate it. Hit OK. With the bottom one, merge that down onto that subsequent layer. 
And then what I'll do is I'll just keep doing this for the rest of the layers. Okay, now that we've applied our markers to each of the layers, you can go through and check each one, make sure they're all correct. Okay, now that we've applied our markers to each layer, the next thing to do is go through and clean up each of the layers to get them ready for cutting. So I'll start with the bottom one and work my way to the top. So with the bottom one, it looks pretty easy to cut. There are a couple of little islands in the hair area which you want to try and keep because that's important detail. So what I like to do is just go to our menu on the left here, grab the eraser, make that much smaller, so maybe like a 10 I'd say, oh, maybe a bit bigger, 30. And then what I'll do is I'll just erase a little bit of the hair just so it doesn't get lost when we cut out our stencils. And the trick to this is trying to make it part of the artwork and making it look natural. So there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. Then we go to our next layer. Um, and this one, I'm gonna use my eraser to get rid of all of these small little dots because uh, it just takes a lot longer to cut them out and they don't really add a lot of uh, extra information to the image. And then also switching with my brush tool with a white. I'll also fill in all of these little islands in the white areas, fill them in a little because we'll probably lose those and can't get cut those out anyway. And then we go to our next one. Our next one is probably the easiest one. There's no islands there. We don't need to worry about that. Then we go to our highlight layer and then with our razor, delete these small islands that we don't need and are probably impossible to cut anyway. So we get rid of those and then using the eyedropper tool, you can select that color, grab your brush and fill in those little spots as well. Okay, and this one's ready to go too. So we're flying through this. Okay, the next one's a little bit trickier because as you can see, if you look at the eye details, we got quite a few islands created here. So what we can do to create a bridge to hold this little these details in place is if you switch on the layer above it, try and look for some places you can hide a bridge behind the layer above. So with the lighter layer selected, I can get my eraser tool and you can sort of see here with the eye detail, if I just click here and drag across and switch off the layer above so you can't see that, I've actually just created a bridge. And what we want to do is create a few more so all of this area is actually connected. Just really trying to hide them as best as you can up behind the layer above it. Also one to this side. I also like to smoothen out the edges so it looks a little bit more natural. And also across here, you can see we need a few islands there. So you can see that when you cut this out now, this is all connected, you won't sort of lose this detail. We also need one through here above here through the upper lip. Should I keep that or not? Maybe I'll fill this one in if it doesn't really add anything to the image. Raise through here. Sometimes it sort of helps to add a little bit of a zigzag with the mouse, like moving your mouse around to make it look a little bit more natural, like it's part of the stencil. Just going through there, just adding a bridge here and there, trying to really connect it on both sides. So when you cut the stencil out, it doesn't really fall apart when you go to paint it. So this one looks pretty sturdy to me now. 
might just fill in these areas because we won't capture that. And then we go on to our layer above. So I can't see that one very well. So with the bottom layer, I might just inverse that so we can see this layer a little bit better. If you switch on our black, we can do the same thing again. So looking for some opportunities with the eraser to create some bridges over here in the same areas. If you switch off the black layer on top, you'll see we've got a couple of bridges here now that should hold all of this in place when we go to paint it. So I'll just connect this so we don't lose this detail on the side there. And I think the rest of the stencil is looking pretty good. So I'll go back down to the bottom, control inverse that again. And then I'll switch that off and the bottom layer off as well so we can check our black layer as well. Do we have any islands on the black? Kind of do. So I'm just going to fill in all of these dots that we won't be able to cut out because they'll get lost. And maybe this as well. and then erase all of these tiny dots. This is probably the most time consuming part of actually creating the stencils, but it's definitely one that you want to take your time on to get your stencils right. Because you kind of want to just cut them once, get them right, and then just get straight into painting, because that's a really fun part anyway. So I've created a few bridges up through the hair here as well. And then at this point, I think, all of our layers are pretty much done and ready to cut. So now what we can do is go through each of our layers and then save them out to get ready to cut. So the way I do that is I just go save, quick export as PNG, and then create a folder somewhere with my stencils, and then stencils, and then save them all here. So now we're ready to go and cut out all of our stencils. Let's get straight into it.